Good morning, PASW staff and clients and friends joining us. Welcome to Wednesday's class. I feel like we need to get back into some jazz work, and um, it's been it's been a long time. We've talked about a lot of jazz musicians. We've talked about John Coltrane. We've talked about Miles Davis. We've talked about Lee Morgan. We've talked about Bud Powell. There's probably others that I'm forgetting because, oh my gosh, I can't believe how many classes we've been doing, right? It's been um, so exciting. Uh, so we've talked about... Um, bebop jazz right so here's jazz the umbrella bebop music charlie parker dizzy gillespie and then what's the other one do you remember i don't know why i'm asking you because there's nobody else in this room uh cool jazz right cool jazz with who with miles davis we're going to talk about another cool jazz um uh trumpet player and singer and uh Today we're going to be talking about Chet Baker. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. A lucky star. Chet Baker reached above, stardom in the 1950s and one of the me. most famous uh, West Coast cool jazz trumpet player and singers um, of all time. And uh, it's, you know, we'll talk about his life and do a little rundown, of course, because I like I like to do that, but. Uh, we're also going to talk about why he's so important. We always go back to that question. It, it, you know, is it great because people say he's great? I always, you always want to go back to that question. And it always makes me, in choosing these classes, think, is this something that is important to talk about? Um, so, yeah, we're going to look at a lot of his styles and techniques that, that kind of made him a revolutionary. And, um, and I don't think he was out at all to be revolutionary. I think he was just a natural, and uh, we'll we'll talk about what made him just a natural, and uh, I think you're gonna like his music a lot. So um, let's uh, let's get into it. So his early life, he's born in Oklahoma, in 1929, to a musical family. His dad was a professional guitar player, and his mom was a pianist. But uh, with the Depression, uh, they, they moved to Glendale, California. So kind of, and he goes to Glendale Junior High School. Um, so kind of is from L.A., not from L.A., but grows up in L.A. And uh, starts singing in the church choir. So this is when he starts using his voice. And, and his dad gives him a trombone, but he thinks it's too, too big. So what's what's smaller than a trombone we've talked about this in class before a trumpet right so uh within a few weeks he just starts practicing all the time and using his ear and starts playing the trumpet um just effortlessly and uh, na so naturally so uh and and here's the th here's one of the things about chet baker is as we listen to him throughout this class he wasn't musically trained he tried he he studied a little bit at Glendale and then did a little bit at El Camino um, school in, in, in LA college sorry um, but he never had formal training and didn't know how to read music instead he used his ear and he actually said that I would I would rely too much on my ear instead of the notes so I think he would try to get the training but I think his ear got in the way I think he he heard something his ear was telling him what notes to play what notes to sing so actually reading music would have gotten in the way um, he goes into the army though and so in 16 he leaves and um, but he comes back to um, LA and he's he he's playing the trumpet and he's in this listening to a lot of Miles Davis and other cool jazz trumpet players and um, there's this audition that Charlie Parker's having um, at the Tiffany Club, which we talked about on 8th Street, right over here, a few blocks away. Um, and he shows up at 3 p.m. to audition, and Charlie Parker likes this guy. So although Charlie Parker's, you know, the founder of Bebop, um, both of them, and we talked about that recording, the Inglewood Jam recording that was recorded down the street, um, even though they had different styles, they it was interesting to hear them play together. And this is one of like you know he's in his early twenties, Chet Baker, so he's he's yet to really achieve any fame. And but you can hear how 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 um, 
easy it sounds like and how what a fresh a breath of fresh air <clears throat> when he plays these notes you know I mean it's it's different than Charlie Parker but um, uh, so because of that he he his he really becomes really well known when he meets a, a, this baritone saxophone player Jerry Mulligan now Mulligan has this quartet quartet is four right four musicians so when we think of a jazz quartet we think of piano bass drums and then a horn player right a saxophone a saxophone trumpet trombone it could be a singer well here Jerry Mulligan has saxophone bass drums and a trumpet player Chet Baker so it's it's they have this pianoless quartet which was not unheard of because Dixieland and earlier music didn't have pianos because you know marching bands because you can't carry a piano down the street but um, for for jazz for 40s 50s cool jazz that's that's pretty unheard of because piano f provides what harmony right because you can't play harmony on a trumpet um, you can only play one note at a time so without having a piano they come up with this new style of playing together um, not separately at the same time but t together and we won't get too much into this but they they're they're composing on the spot and they're um, what they're doing is providing counterpoint now the easiest way to um, describe counterpoint is it's pretty much more than one line um, going on at the same time okay so if it's just a singer singing one song that's not contrapuntal if it's a singer singing a song and a and another singer singing a melody around that song not the same line then counterpoint becomes in, uh, more involved and then another I mean that's you know that's orchestration because you have flutes trumpets you have 80 people and sometimes they're playing the exact same line but most of the time there's harmonies going on so it's it's more than one line going on and it sounds like this this is what their sound is like <laughs> This is actually recorded at The Hague, and uh, we might talk about The Hague. It was a very famous jazz club that's not there anymore, but uh, again, a few blocks away from my place, right in Koreatown, where all this exciting jazz was happening. It wasn't called Koreatown back then, but uh, uh, yeah, it was just down the street. And the song that really makes them famous, this quartet, is their version of um, Richard Rodgers' song, My Funny Valentine. <laughs> This really put them on the map, and not only on the jazz map, but on, a little bit further on the popular map because the sound was so original. You have that walking bass, and you hear how kind of mellow and sensitive it sounds. And they're both playing at the same time. You would think a baritone sax player and a trumpet player playing at the same time would just resol resolve in chaos, but it's actually it's, it's very uh, smooth and intimate. So he becomes really famous in the 50s and 60s, but uh, like many musicians, uh, suffers uh, from a very bad addiction to heroin and speed. And um, I, want, I don't want to dwell on it, but it's 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 hard to not mention because it was uh, drugs were such a part of his life. Unfortunately, um, he he died at 58 um, in 1988. He fell out of a window um, in Amsterdam, and um, you know. Uh, it's it's terrible so but he, he although 50 is very young he did record a lot of music and um, was pretty prolific and uh, Elvis Costello was a big um, uh, influence on uh, he was influenced by Chet Baker and, and had him on his album in the 80s and um, there was kind of this Chet Baker kind of became this kind of cult hero figure um, before he died which so he was able to, I think people were getting into his music from the 50s and 60s that he had recorded and made famous. So let's talk about his style. What, 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 why is his style so different? And why was it different for back then? Well, 
Okay, his phrasing, right? His phrasing both on the trumpet and his voice is <clears throat> so, so different than everything. It's so sensitive. His playing and singing is so vulnerable. Now, when you think of singers in the 50s, what do you think of Sinatra? We even, and we think of trumpet players and singers, Louis Prima and, and um, Louis Armstrong. They were trumpet players with singers. Here's Chet Baker, a, a trumpet player and singer, and he sounds nothing like Louis Prima or Louis Armstrong. And when he sings, he sounds nothing like a crooner. He sounds nothing like Bing Crosby or Sinatra. And he's and he's singing without using any any of his body. It's all head voice singing. And there's no vibrato. If you listen to it, it's completely vibratoless and somewhat and somewhat feminine sounding tenor voice. So different back then. I mean, Mel Torme and June Christie kind of had that thing, but for um, for a male singer in the '50s, and again, I, I I'm, I'm I'm giving you the context of the '50s. This kind of non-masculine singing was really different, and I don't think he was doing this on purpose. I think he was just using his ear. This was his originality. He didn't, and I think people were thought maybe he was trying to make a statement or political statement but um he was just like no no you know like um i like girls but i i, I sing like this you know so and that's yeah, that's a quote so um it's uh it's it's it was really different it's a very different way of approaching jazz standards and i just think what i love so much about him is his um his vulnerability when he's singing and playing, his sensitivity, but vulnerability. And somebody pointed out his, his self-protectiveness, and that's interesting. It does sound like he's protecting himself, and we don't know from what, but I think he was introverted, and I think, um, much like Bud Powell and drugs being a part of their music, unfortunately, um, perhaps they were trying to escape or... or, or um, use their use their playing their jazz playing as a way of uh not overcoming their addictions or whatever but um ex expressing their loneliness and their joy to us through their through their music and improvising so for not reading music and playing by ear his whole life and making a living off of uh, not reading music but being one of the greatest musicians in the world a truly remarkable and change the way male singers were singing and uh, you know and just just a genius and a one of a kind and um buried right over here at inglewood park cemetery so very close to school so um next to his father's and um what a what a genius so i hope you enjoyed this uh class on chet baker uh we'll talk about some more jazz um i'll try to find some happy jazz musicians <laughs> Um, I don't go out of my way to do this, uh, trust me. Yes, I may dream a million dreams, but how can they come true? Love you guys, miss you guys, bye. You.